Today on Kingdom Pass, our theme is Jehovah Shammah. You see, our God in heaven, he has many different names, but today we're going to see him as the God who promises to be there for us and to prosper us. Now, we spoke with Londa Larman. This is a powerful songwriter and worship leader. This lady has been through so many different things, and at the very point of committing suicide, Jehovah Shammah, he showed up for her, and he can do the same for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm Sam Tita. I'm Nikki. And I tell you, we've got a great show for you. Uh, we spoke with a powerful woman of God. That was awesome, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was. When she first came in, actually you weren't there yet. So the uh, first thing I asked her was, do you know Sam? Have you seen Sam before? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked because I always had that impression that you knew her. Okay, okay. But yeah, and the whole testimony, powerful, powerful thing. And, Really, I think those were the words that I need to hear too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the same time, and you know, we'll talk a lot more about that further down. But you know what? It's it's so perfect. That that's why what we do is so exciting. Mm -hmm. We get to meet all these awesome people. God has done amazing things in their lives. Yeah. And I know one thing you guys were talking about was her earrings. <laughs> I mean, you would have thought that was like ministry, right? Here. <laughs> the minute she came in, all the girls in the room was like. <laughs> and, and the guys were like, what are you guys talking about? It's the earrings, you know, let's just steal the earrings from her. <laughs> Christians, eh? <laughs> but yeah, you know, but, um, you know, she was, it was, it was an awesome, awesome time. It was, it was. The praying, the, I mean, you, you, you can just tell when God has done wonderful things mm -hmm. in people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it was, it was great. And she wrote all the songs through the things she's gone through mm -hmm, too. And mm -hmm. it's just amazing mm -hmm. because when you sit down and listen to all these stories behind mm -hmm. a person's life, mm -hmm. you realize God is there yeah. the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And to be able to bounce back from all of that and be so productive in the kingdom of God, that mm. is just powerful. Amen. Well, listen, we've got a bunch of awesome events we're yep, going to talk Naomi's about. Yeah, waiting right there. All so right. let's go to her. Thank you, Sam and Nikki. Now these are the events we have for the upcoming weeks. Be sure to attend. I am confident that God will meet you there. The first one is called Passion Vancouver, happening March 23rd. Featured worship artists include names like Chris Tomlin and Kristen Stanfield. The venue for this event is Rogers Arena in Vancouver, BC. The next event we have for you is a couple of worship concerts featuring Aaron Gillespie, Parachute Band, and the 905. It is happening today, March 17th, at the Heritage College and Seminary in Cambridge, Ontario, and tomorrow, March 18th, at C4 Church in Ajax, Ontario. The next event we have for you is Abundance. This is happening at the Champion Forest Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. Speakers include Lisa Harper and Angela Thomas. Our final event for you is a night of song and laughter. This is happening March 23rd and features Chanda Pierce and Natalie Grant. It's happening in Cicero, New York. For more information on any of these events, check our website at www.kingdombuzz.org. See you next week. Now back to Sam and Nikki. Thank you, Naomi. Such amazing events. But, you know, I notice it's a lot of youthful <laughs> <Youth>? events. <laughs> you know what? I think maybe it's a March break or something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know when March break is. Mm -hmm. I'm past that age. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, I, I, I know there were a lot of youth ones, but uh, those are really good ones, though, for them to increase their faith. And mm -hmm. you know what? They're the next generation. They're the future generation, and we should you're raise right. them up, you know, strong in faith and everything. You're Especially right. if you're in Vancouver, strongly recommend you to go to The Passion in Vancouver because I'm pretty amazed that they actually brought it up to Vancouver. Maybe because Chris Tomlin is doing his um, tour around um, Canada and he happened to be in Vancouver. I, I noticed you, uh, I think it was earlier this year, uh, the Passion uh, uh, event was happening. In, was it in Atlanta? Yeah, Georgia, and Atlanta. You were actually going to go cover it. I was trying to, but mm. you know, <laughs> you know, my executive producer <laughs> was saying, no, we need you here. So... <laughs> Well, listen, now you don't have to go to Atlanta, even though it was probably... So you mean I can't go to Vancouver uh, to cover it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you know what? The funny thing is, it's probably closer going to Atlanta than it is going to Vancouver. Actually, you're right. You know? So yeah, anyway. that's true. That's true. All but, that's uh, in the same country. The, that particular event, you, you, you have just a particular heart for it, though. Well, I, I, I think it's, it's really um, encouraging to see a lot of young people mm -hmm. to be honest to their faith in yes. God. And not only that, because they have a lot of things that um, it's practical help to people. Like they were helping um, human trafficking okay. during the conference and they have huge exhibitions to teach people about that. Mm -hmm. So not only do you get like a spiritual feeding, mm -hmm. you know, you also get to learn about different things and actually help out in different causes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. put you know, Jesus' name out there. Amen. amen. Right. So I think the, that's the good part. This is uh, it's, it's a one day, though, as opposed to the normal. Yeah, it is a one day thing. And the, the lineup is not as um, packed. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed, I think only Lu, um, Pastor Louis will be the one speaking. Okay. And, um, but I'm sure it will still be just as great because it's pretty much almost the same team except for the lineup of speakers. Okay. But um, yeah, for sure, catch it. Definitely. Well, you know, we were talking with, with Londa when we did the interview, mm -hmm. and one of the things that, you know, came out was just this whole thing about trusting God. Yeah. And, you know, what an awesome place to, you know, for a young person. Uh, you're not that much older yourself, you know, <laughs> but what an awesome place for a young person to go to, uh, to build your faith and learn to, to really trust God. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. I think um, a lot of the speakers, well, in Atlanta anyway, mm -hmm. you know, like Andy Stanley was there, mm -hmm. um, Francis Chan was there. Mm -hmm. And these are faith guys, you know, people who have been through stuff mm -hmm. and just like Londa herself, right. you know, when they've been right. through stuff, that's mm -hmm. when they can actually bring out the testimony and how God has brought them through it mm -hmm. just because they place their trust in God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about in the interview too, um, both of you, you and Londa, were saying how God sometimes pushes us to the edge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and really stretch our faith to see if, you know, when it comes down to it, mm -hmm. do we really trust God? Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the question I think each and every one of us have to ask ourselves mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Do mm -hmm. we really trust God? We say we do. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say it. Mm -hmm. but trust me, <laughs> it's, it's easy to say because, I mean, we, the, the reason we had actually gotten sort of on that tangent was when I shared about when we were building our new home. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, we got the approval from the bank and then we thought we were big shots and we needed a better deal. <laughs> and then five banks, Nikki, five Five banks later on said no to us, mm -hmm. and we had so much money on the line. If we couldn't close, they were going to keep our money, and I'm sure those guys would sue us on top of it. So I was shaking like a leaf, okay? <laughs> crying, <Maple> leaf? <laughs> yo, <laughs> crying out to God. I don't think I cared what leaf I was at that time, all right? But I tell you, the Holy Spirit showed up, and he asked me very clearly, Sam, do you trust me? Mm. If I put you at the edge of a cliff and you knew it was me and I said jump, would you jump? Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, I don't know what, how many choices I had, okay? I, 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 I mean, now I didn't just go ahead and say yes. I mean, I had to think through it, mm -hmm. okay? Um, what, first of all, what choices did I have? Uh, this was God. I mean, this was like a Peter thing, okay? Uh, it was like, Lord, where else can I go? Yeah. Yes. I trust you. And if I'm at the edge of a cliff and you said to jump, yes, I will jump. And then guess what he said? He said, trust me then to the very end. Amen. Guess what? We got the 
best rate the market was offering at the time. I mean, that's a God we serve. Amen. You know what I mean? That's a God we serve. He will allow us to come to the edge. And then talking about that, you and Corville. Corville is a friend of ours, powerful man of mm -hmm. God. You work with his TV show as well. What did he say about that same stuff? Well, he actually didn't know what we what we were talking mm -hmm. before. Like I didn't tell him about the interview or anything. We were just talking, you know, before the show and mm -hmm. everything. And he was like saying, you know, sometimes we just have to go all the way to the edge mm -hmm. and trust God. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, to the edge again, <laughs> you know, and then subsequently the next day I had lunch with my friend mm -hmm. and he was like, you know, you know, right now I'm at the edge mm -hmm. and I really need to trust God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, good message for me, I guess, I, you know. Well, I, you know what, God was moving in a particular direction. And, and look at uh, Londa. Yeah. I mean, the woman has been through so many things. Mm -hmm. I mean, rape, um, all kinds of stuff. And she had depression gotten to depression, yeah. you know. Uh, she had gotten to the point where she was basically ready. To give up. To give up. I know. And God showed up. As he always does. As he always does. Never too late. <laughs> Never too early. He always, at the right time, I he's know, always there. I know, I know. What an awesome God. Amen. What an Amen. awesome God. You know what? Let's just go into Londa's interview and see how awesome God can be. Amen. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. The question I guess I want to ask is, how did Londa get to this point? Um, I've been singing since the age of seven. Okay. Uh, singing in choirs, um, singing in groups, always in the background, never up front. Mm -hmm. I did my first real solo, I think, when I was about 16. So around 13, 14, I was in the Youth Outreach Mass Choir, which was a well-known uh, community choir in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I went to... Uh, who else did I sing with? Soul Fellowship Choir, Powerhouse Soul Fellowship Choir. I mm -hmm. got my own group together okay. of uh, young girls called the Gospel Soul Sisters, mm -hmm. ministered all over Toronto too. Okay. And then from there, Sharon Riley and Faith Corral. And it was out of Sharon Riley and Faith Corral that my solo debut came. Mm -hmm. um, they got signed to EMI Gospel out of Nashville. Okay. And once they got signed, um, they did a CD and the people from EMI heard me do a solo on that CD and mm -hmm. thought that, you know, wondered if I consider going, you know, being a solo artist myself. Mm -hmm. And that's where I became signed to them as well as a solo artist. Mm -hmm. And I produced Love Letters. And from there, um, being with EMI Gospel was wonderful. It was a very good experience. Mm -hmm. um, I have no complaints, even though I'm no longer with them. They right. were very good to me. Right. Um, the exposure that they gave me and the way that they introduced me uh, to the gospel industry was very good. Okay. Um, I was well received by everybody. They celebrated me when they uh, met me and introduced themselves to me. They were very warm and friendly. And it's good that I was able, even after uh, being dropped from EMI so long ago, it's been about nine, ten years since my first CD. And now to come out with this new one, I think that there were reasons why um, it took so long, okay. outside of the obvious, which would be money, because mm -hmm. um, it's very expensive to do a CD right. on your own. Um, I got married, I got two babies. Yeah, so a lot of things I think had to happen first before the next CD came out, mm -hmm. um, because I've gone through a lot of experiences right. since then, and even prior to then. Um, experiences even growing up uh, to deal with me as a person, where I've been um, sexually assaulted um, on different occasions. I've gone through low self-esteem and depression. Well, now, slow down. Now, you, you, you gotta <laughs> slow down. Because, you know, I, I mean, I'm looking at Londa, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a great voice. You're a beautiful woman. Okay. Uh, child of God from way back when. Mm -hmm. How, what kind of lies does a devil tell a person like you mm -hmm. to give you self-esteem uh, issues? Oh boy. Well, going through um, the sexual assaults that I went through, okay. um, you just begin to feel ugly. You wonder what it is about yourself, why you attract this type of behavior mm -hmm. to yourself. You don't feel good enough. You don't, it doesn't matter what people say, mm -hmm. you know, because like you say, you're beautiful and you're this and you're that. People will tell you all of that, but unless you feel that way about yourself, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. Um, it goes through one ear and out the other. You know, you understand that they see something that you just can't see. 
And um, so the enemy plays on those things and he he tells you, you know, you've been through this and it doesn't, you know, you're, you're trying to go up there and lead worship and, you know, everybody thinks that you're great. But trust me, if you go and kill yourself today, nobody's going to remember you tomorrow. This is this is the kind These of stuff the kind, that's... Oh, yeah, definitely. But so here you are, yeah, all yeah. of this stuff going through your mind, mm -hmm. you know, you're leading worship. God continues to guide you mm -hmm. and, and just nudge, uh, mm -hmm. nudge you along. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get past it? How did you get from going through that to being where you are now? Oh, boy. Well, it's finally accepting that you are the apple of God's eye. Amen. You know, I, I believe that I am the apple of his eye. I believe that when I pray to him, he hears me mm -hmm. and that I'm just not praying in mm -hmm. vain. Mm -hmm. You know, he's actually hearing me. I've seen God's hand move in my life. Mm -hmm. He's blessed me with a beautiful husband. He's blessed me with beautiful boys. Even though, even with my second one, when I found out that I was pregnant, I was actually preparing for the recording and I found out late that I was pregnant. We were not planning to have a second baby uh, so quick. And when I, I told my husband, I said, if I am pregnant, <laughs> you are in big trouble. <laughs> because it just wasn't the right time. I was like, no, we're not ready for another one. We wanted to wait uh, for certain, you know, funds to come and financial resources first. And um, the baby's here. I had to do this recording, five months pregnant. But when I found out, I was depressed. Depressed, depressed. I said, no, God, how could you do this? You knew I wanted to wait. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to handle another baby? And I cried for weeks. Wow. <laughs> cried for weeks. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave me a song that is that I recorded that night saying, um, you need to trust me. Hmm. You need to trust me. Amen. You need to put your feet. You can't be a believer and tell all these people he's able, he's able, and all of that, and you don't trust me. How how, how how did you how did you get past that? Because I know there are people watching, mm -hmm. going through depression. Mm -hmm. There were times you said you, you you felt like just ending it all. Yes, there were times like that. Um, when uh, I was going through the low self-esteem, this was in my younger days. Okay. Um, there was a time I was in my room, I found myself in my room, and the lights were all off. I mean, my family is going about their business downstairs and nobody knows mm. what's going on. And I shut off all the lights and I said, God, I'm ready to end it. And I went to get the pills and I said, you know, that I, I know you are the King of Kings. I know that you are the Lion of Judah. I know that you are all these things. But right now, all I need is you, you to be a daddy. That's all that I need you right now to be in my life, in this moment. Mm -hmm. I need you to come. I need to feel you embrace me, literally, or else it's over. I literally felt the presence of God come and do that in my room, all alone. And it was an amazing atmosphere at that moment when I felt it. I just said, thank you, Lord. And I began to worship God. I fell on my knees and I worshiped God. And I said, I, I rebuke darkness. I rebuke it. I come against it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I believe that I, I, I stepped away from that. And I believe that I was delivered in that moment. But then the enemy knows your weakness and mm -hmm. he comes back again. Mm -hmm. When I lost uh, my first baby, because I lost the first baby, okay. and it was hard for me because I saw the baby. And my husband, they wouldn't let my husband come into the room with me to see. So I had to deal with that all by myself. And again, depression came on me, and I wanted to end it again. But I recognized it, even though I almost went too far, I recognized it, and I bound it again. Okay. And I said, you cannot have me. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I just, I, the thing that I think that people have to do is recognize. They have to know what their weakness is, right. recognize it, so that when the enemy comes, you are able to stand against him flat-footed and say, you are not going to get me this way again. Amen. You are not going to do it. Amen. And all of us go through this where, mm -hmm. we, we, where the enemy throws our weaknesses in our face. Yes. And you have to, it's a battle every day. Paul says, I beat myself mm -hmm. constantly. Yes and put the flesh under my foot so mm -hmm. that I can do what it is that God wants me to do. That's right. And so that's what I had to go through. When, when the depression tried to come again with this second pregnancy, you know, God says, enough is enough. You need to trust me. You know, so the song says, you know, I trust in you even though I can see plans of the enemy revealing. Mm -hmm. I trust in you. 
I believe that you are able to see me through this thing. That's what the Lord gave me. And I believe that every time people hear that song, they are reminded because everybody goes through a situation yes. where, you know, it's when the music stops that that's when it really counts because when we're in church everything is great you know praise the lord hallelujah, right. and all of that right. but when the music stops and you got to go home to that destructive marriage mm -hmm. and you got to go home to those kids that won't listen that's when you have to put everything that happened in church that's right. into application into your life there you, you go. have to make the application mm -hmm. you've come through sexual abuse mm -hmm. depression mm -hmm reach the point of suicide, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then this, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the first, mm -hmm. but here you are, mm -hmm. Great Things. Yes. Tell us about this CD. The Lord gave me that song, Great Things, along with uh, my husband who wrote it with me and okay. the vocal producer, Navon Sinclair. So Peter Moncrief and Navon Sinclair okay. wrote that song with me. and. Uh, it was just a song I think that was necessary for me and for others. Right. What I say is that it's a song for you to declare that great things are in store for you. God has not forgotten about you. Amen. He has not forgotten about you. Whatever he has promised you, he will manifest it. There was a time in my life when, especially after the first CD, because it's like I've said, nine, ten years, and I was like, God, you've called me to this place. You've called me to sing. You've called me to minister to the people of God through song, and I believe that you've anointed me to do so. And there were prophecies that were spoken over my life. And I said, God, I need to see those things come to pass. I need to know that I can do another CD again because there's people that need to uh, hear the testimonies that I have. There's people that need to be ministered. There's people that um, are broken and need to be healed. They need to be delivered. And I know that you can use me for this. And so he gave me this song to remind everybody that he has not forgotten you. He has a plan for your life. Amen. Don't be discouraged. Encourage yourself mm -hmm. in the Lord. Uh, be reminded that you are still the apple of God's eye. Amen. He loves you. He cares about you. His plan is to uh, bring you out in the fullness uh, of time. He will do that it, while you are alive. It will not happen after you die. It will happen while you are alive. Amen. He will do it. He is not a God that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should ever repent. He has not changed his mind. Mm -hmm. Continue to serve the Lord. Continue to live for him. Do what he tells you to do and his promises will be manifested in your life. Mm -hmm. I believe that it will happen. Great things are going to come in 2012. Today, mm -hmm. God has given you this the, 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 the music mm -hmm. that you have on this CD. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a beautiful family. Mm -hmm. um, you have a wonderful husband. Mm -hmm. Ministry is great. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, you know, I, I pick up a magazine and Londa's in there performing with a group of people. I, I open up this and, and you're there and that's how we came to be talking <laughs> yeah, anyway. <okay. laughs> what is God saying today, Londa? What mm -hmm. is it you sent in your spirit God is saying today? I'm hearing that uh, simply that God is able. Amen. He is able. There is nothing that's too hard for God. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone through situations in my life where um, you can't see the light of day. You wonder if there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I want you to know that God is able. He is saying, I am able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. There is no situation that is too hard for me. There is no circumstance that I can't get you out of, no problem that I cannot solve. But sometimes the test that we go through is, you can't have a testimony without the test. You cannot get uh, be a participant in all the glory unless you go through the process. You have to go through the refiner's fire and that process sometimes is so painful. It's so hard. You lose people along the way. You know, the journey isn't easy, but God says that I am with you always until the end of the earth. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is saying that he is able. He is able, he is able, his strength is perfect. And in your weakness, he is made strong. And God wants to show off in your situation. Amen, amen, <laughs> amen. I thank you for coming to the show. Oh, and trust me, me, we will be calling you because we need you back here, okay? Amen. We have a CD to give away. Uh, Londa Larman, uh, great things. You don't want to miss this. We'll give a CD away and um, we'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, this is Sam Tito once again. What an amazing God we serve. Listen to me. The reason we bring you all these interviews and events is so that you can watch and attend and be filled with a fresh word from Jehovah El Shaddai, our almighty God. 
Interviewing Lin, uh, Londa was an awesome experience. Now you can tell when God has done an amazing work in a pe person's life. Now I don't know where you are or what you're going through, but I know this without a shadow of a doubt that the same God that met with Londa in that dark room at the point of suicide, that same God can meet with you and pull you out of the very pits of despair. He is Jehovah Shammah, our God who has promised to be there for us and to watch over us and to prosper us. You see, God has many different names. He is known by uh, Jehovah El Shaddai, our almighty God. He's also called Jehovah Rapha, our God who is a healer. But you see, when you need provision, you don't necessarily need to call on Jehovah El Shaddai. But I'll tell you who you really need to call on. You need to call on Jehovah Jireh, our God who provides. This is a good lesson for you, child of God, because God will show you the side of himself that will get you the need that you have at the particular time. You see, this is what is the issue though, okay? You know, you have to know his many names so that you can call on the one that you need when the need arises. For Londa, what she needed was Jehovah Shama, and he showed up in that room, just at the point where she was about to kill herself. Remember, uh, I remember a day recently uh, when I was going through a, a sad and lonely time. Uh, I have a wonderful wife who is my best earthly friend. But I'll tell you, there are times when no one on earth can truly grasp what you're going through or where you're coming from. I needed someone on that day to be there for me that early morning as I cried tears of loneliness in a Tim Hortons parking lot. Now, my earthly father would have been a great person to call uh, for, for, for some uh, counseling and advice, just to reassure me that everything was going to be okay. But he wasn't there for me. Now, my good, good friend, uh, Reverend uh, uh, Fred Mitchell, now he was in the mission field in Jamaica, so he couldn't be there for me. Being alone and with nowhere else to turn, I cried out to God. I didn't know, uh, I didn't need healing that morning. I didn't need provision that morning. What I needed, friends, was the presence of God, and he showed up. Yes, Jehovah Shammah, he showed up that morning. He was there for me. He will be there for you just when you need him. All you have to do is call on his name and tell him how desperately you need him in your life. I promise you he is faithful and will manifest his awesome presence in your life in a tangible way. You just have to let him know. Ask Londa. She will testify to that. You heard her testimony. Now she's equipped and dangerous, doing powerful things uh, with her talents in the kingdom of God and with the testimony that God has given her. You can do the same. Father, I pray that you will reveal your awesome power and yourself, Jehovah Shammah, to that brother or sister who is watching right now and needs a special touch, a special touch. Amen? Now, I want you to visit our website. Uh, put up your events up there so that people can get to it, so that we can come together and, and as a members of the same body to worship and to fellowship together. Listen, thank you so much for watching this episode of Kingdom Buzz. I pray that Jehovah Shammah be with you and bless you wherever you are. See you next time.